So my name is Jessica Doobie and welcome to today's webinar on the Q2 release highlights 2022. Um, my name is Jessica and I'm going to be taking you through the webinar this morning. Just to let you all know, this webinar is of course being recorded and it will take us about an hour to get through the whole webinar and that will of course depend on questions. Excellent. Before we get started, I just want to take you through a quick agenda so that you know exactly what's coming in the next hour. So first of all, I'm going to be giving you an overview of planned maintenance so that you can understand what planned maintenance actually is. We're going to be going through the benefits of using Fixflow's planned maintenance tool. I'm going to then be delving into planned maintenance. Now, the reason for this is because in Q2, the biggest release that we actually made was all to do with planned maintenance. We've made it even better for you. So for you to understand planned maintenance, I'm going to be going through how you can view, add, and of course, edit the service event templates. I'm going to be showing you the works planner on a per property basis. Then I'm going to be showing you how you can manually add a service event to a property on fixed flow. And we're really going to be focusing on the new and improved landlord approval workflow. I'll be showing you some settings available on plan maintenance, which are also brand new. And we've also got some new, new, new notifications, sorry, which will allow you to um, keep your landlords really easily in the loop. I'm going to be showing you a quick intro to the compliance matrix and also go through how you can share your works planner with your landlords. I'm going to be giving you an introduction to Fixflow Academy, where we have got an absolutely fantastic planned maintenance course available for you. It's completely free of charge and it is the best way for you to learn how to use planned maintenance. And finally, at the end, I'm going to be giving you an introduction to multiple dashboards, which is, in fact, the very best way for you to track planned maintenance if, if this is something you're going to start using. Any questions at all, please do get them over to me. I'd be so happy to see you engage with me today. So there is a Q&A button which is available on your Zoom bar. If you click there at any stage through the webinar, um, um, put your question in there and I will answer everything, of course, at the end, just to keep us fully on track this morning. Perfect. So before I delve into the actual webinar, I just want to uh, talk a bit about our releases, because, of course, this is a release highlights webinar this morning. So we do our releases and what they include is they include kind of new features, also improvements, and we also fix bugs in our releases as well. Um, and we release quite often. What to look out for? So it's really important you keep up with our releases so that you can see everything new and what's been improved so you can use our tools effectively. So we will send out a monthly email with our product updates, so keep an eye out for that. There will occasionally as well be a pop-up come up within the Fixflow site itself, and that will, of course, give you all the details about what's been released. And also on our help site, help.fixflow.com, we have some fantastic release notes on there as well, um, which we do update very often. So it's great to keep up with to date with the releases because it allows you then to see better value um, from Fixflow and see a higher return on your investment. OK, excellent. We're now going to kick this off with an overview of planned maintenance. So for those of you that don't yet use plan maintenance, it is an absolutely brilliant feature which helps you to keep compliant with all of your planned works. So we're, still, we're talking both statutory works and also non-statutory events as well. So some examples would include EPCs, gas safety certificates, EICRs and also non-statutory events such as gardening, window cleaning, etc. Now, you can use Fixflow's planned maintenance tool to set up recurring events, meaning you can set and forget these events so that every single, for example, year, a gas safety certificate is automatically, the issue will automatically be created for you on the date that you set. You can now, as I've discussed, request landlord approval, which we're really going to be focusing on throughout this webinar. 
You can also auto instruct these recurring issues onto contractors so that you don't have to at the time. So when the issue is created, it will go straight off to the contractor that you would like it to go to. You can use the fantastic works planner, and that's within a property profile, to view all of your recurring plan maintenance events for that particular property. And also, as I discussed earlier, we're going to go through this as well, our compliance matrix. And that allows you to see an overview of how compliant all of your properties are. And just to let you know, service events can be added one by one manually or as a bulk import. And don't forget, we have got the fantastic um, planned maintenance course, which is free of charge on Fixed Flow Academy, which I would urge all of you to sign up to if you're going to use planned maintenance if you haven't already. So there's a little example just below. So with plan maintenance, it's really important to remember that you will have service events, which you will set up. For example, a guest safety certificate will recur every year. And then on the instruction date, which you add an IS number, which you should be quite familiar with if you've been using fixed flow for a while. So an IS number will be created and that will automatically create. And as I say, it can either auto instruct off to a contractor or you can manually do that yourself. So that's a bit of an overview of planned maintenance for those of you who haven't yet used it. Brilliant. So I'm here now on my dashboard. So I'm on my fixed flow site. And the first thing I want to go through with you is um, how you can view, add, and also edit your service event templates. Before I do that, I just want to nip through actually the benefits, sorry, of using planned maintenance. So here we go. So as I said before, it can help you to keep compliant with both statutory and non-statutory events. It is here to set up automated recurring events so you will never miss an event again, which I think is brilliant. As I say, you can request landlord approval before sending the works on to a contractor. You can automate your work so it saves you and your team time. You can very easily keep all of your parties in the loop throughout the workflow. And also you can, you can view your compliance matrix on both a per property basis and also across your entire portfolio. So let's start with how you can view, add and edit your service event templates. So planned maintenance sits on your left hand menu sidebar just here. And by clicking on this, you can see a drop down does appear. Now, by clicking here on event templates, this will take you through to a number of event templates which we have preset for you. But of course, if something is missing, you can add that easily yourself. So to add a new template, you would click here on add template, but I would prompt you first of all to kind of go through all of the options available to you first, just so that you don't kind of try and add something that's already on there for you. So this is how you can view them all. And for example, you can uh, search for a particular template by using this search bar at the top. So for example, if I pop gas in here, um, I can see two kind of events which have the word gas in them. So I've got my gas safety certificate and boiler service, and also I've got the gas safety certificate only as well. If you wanted to edit any of these event templates, of course you can do so by clicking here on, for example, gas safety certificate only. And it will take me through then to the event template where I can see all of the details about it. Now, if you were going to add service events manually, I would recommend that you make sure the details on here are correct because it will save you a lot of time when adding the events. For example, here we have got the instruction interval. Now, this is how far in advance of the due date you would like to create the IS number. So if, for example, you wanted to have it longer than 21 days, this is my example, my template. Of course, you can amend the unit here. And I would recommend ensuring that you are happy with this. And of course, any changes which are made, you can press save here as well. 
So it is, it is worth ensuring that you are happy with all of this. You've got your instruction notes here as well. Of course, setting this up to repeat the whole, the beauty of plan maintenance basically is that you get to set these up as recurring events. So yes, having this to repeat once a year makes full sense. So it is worth making sure you're happy with all of your um, event templates. And also, like I said before, if anything is missing at all, you can easily click here to add a whole new template so that that is then added to your plan maintenance um, events and then you would be able to add them on to properties you cannot add an event template if it is not already on here so please make sure that they are added here for you to then um, add to properties Brilliant. I'm now going to go into a property and look at the works planner, which is on a per property basis. So to get to this, um, you would click here on planned maintenance and then go here on properties. From here, you can search your property address. So if there's something particular you're looking for, you can type in the property address like this and then click directly into the property. And this will take you straight through to the works planner here. So this is an example of a works planner before anything is added to it. So if you haven't started using plan maintenance yet, or you have a property that doesn't have any plan maintenance on it, this is how it will look. So it will have kind of a red uh, square here, and it will show here as an example event, e.g. EPC. OK, you can view this on a yearly, monthly, weekly or daily basis. So as you change here, you will notice that the calendar on the right hand side here changes quite significantly, like so. And with this example, it's best to view this monthly. So this is, of course, an example event. There's nothing in here yet. And on the right hand side, you will easily be able to see kind of how compliant you are with the particular event once it's added on this works planner. So just to let you know, with the service events you set up, service events, just like IS numbers, have their own issue statuses. So here we can see in the last three months, so April, May and June, we have got a green bubble and in that green bubble sits the letter C. So this is showing us that we've been compliant for the last three months. You can hover over this just to see as well. We can see the event has been completed and we are therefore compliant. The month or year or whichever kind of view you have on here will be highlighted the month that we're in. And we can see here we've got a red square with the uh, letter I. Now, this is informing us that this is, of course, overdue and that the event is, in fact, in progress. Now, what this means is that the instruction date has passed with the I because it's in progress, which means an IS number has been created, but this is now overdue. Now, overdue is signaled not just with the colour red, but also with a square as opposed to a circle in case anybody suffers with any colour blindness or anything like that. We can clearly see by hovering over it that this event is now in progress and is overdue. And whatever we're currently at, so for example, if this is now overdue, this will here show as overdue. If it was to be green and a bubble, this here would show as a green bubble. So on the left hand side, this works really well if you've got lots and lots of events in, um, in place. You can see very quickly whether you're compliant or not on the left hand side. And we can see for the next four months, we have a pending bubble, which is grey. Pending, of course, means this is now in the future. Pending means there will be no IS number attached to the issue. Everything's in the future. And that is also matched with a green, sorry, with a grey bubble. The bubble basically means either you're compliant and you're all good, or it's in the future and it's not yet overdue. So again, you can hover over this and see when an issue will be created. So this goes um, back to uh, plan maintenance being recurring. So we've got recurring events set up all the way to and including November. Excellent. When it comes to the service event statuses, we do have a number of them here. So there are um, eight or nine. So we've got here pending. So pending means the instruction date is in the future and there is no issue attached to the service event. 
We then have two new service event statuses, which have been added in Q2, which are awaiting approval. And that means that the service event is with the landlord to approve this. And we're going to delve into that in some more detail in a moment. And we've also got instruction requested. And that means that the landlord has actually requested for the job to be allocated to them. In progress means that the IS number has been created. So there will be an IS number then attached to the service event. And that is then in progress. We also have a waiting review. So you can actually um, request that your service events are reviewed. And we'll go into that in some more detail later. If they are in a waiting review, then of course, um, you'll need to review the service event before you can complete it. And that will be really clear as well on your um, works planner. You can also easily track that on the dashboard, but we'll get to that later. Uh, complete, of course, means that the issue is now closed and the service event is complete, and that's what you're aiming to get to. We've also got, of course, remedial and completed remedial, remedial rectified there as well. So there's lots of different service event statuses here for you, and it's really important that you do understand how these work. And again, these will be explained in some greater detail on the Academy. Okay, brilliant. So now let's bring this works planner to life. So as I said, this is what you can see when um, there is no, there are no events um, set against this particular property. But if we would like to add an event, this can be done in two ways. So you can do it via bulk import. And again, that will be shown on the Academy, or you can do this manually. If you've got kind of 20 events or more, we'd highly recommend that you go via bulk import. Yes, there is a spreadsheet you'll need to import, but it is quicker. And I would say as a top tip, always make sure you've got a lot of attention to detail when you're adding service events, whether it's done manually or via a bulk import, because if your dates are incorrect, then issues will be created at the wrong date and you might fall to be um, not compliant, even though it looks like you are. So actually getting the detail right at this stage is really, really important. Even get like a colleague maybe to double check things, especially if you've got a big spreadsheet and just make sure that you really are um, paying attention. So I've clicked here now on add event, and this is how I can add an event manually to this particular property. So the first thing I'll need to do is add an event template. And as I mentioned before, this will pull through from here. So if the event template is not added onto fixed flow, you will not be able to find it from this drop down. And you'll need to make sure you go back and add the event first. So you can, of course, kind of scroll through all the options available to you. Or alternatively, you can actually search for the event if you know exactly what it is you're adding, which I imagine you will. The event name will pull through based on the event template and underneath here you can add your cost code. This is used more for kind of a block management to be honest so I'm going to leave this blank for now and move on. Last completed date. This is an optional field but we really recommend that you do add this. The reason for that is because if you add it that means then that the um, on the works planner and on your compliance matrix, it will show you to be currently compliant and have a green C. If this is not added, everything will be in the future. So all of your compliance matrix will just show as gray as will your works planners. So in order to show yourself as currently compliant, it's highly recommended that you do in fact add a last completed date. So for example, I'm going to hit add the 1st of December last year. That's the last time a gas safety certificate was completed at this particular property. Next here, we've got works due by. Now again, this is where you need the attention to detail. This does need to be correct because of course, this is what the contractor will see, for example, if they are completing a um, gas safety certificate, they need to know when actually the works are due by. So I'm going to go here with the 1st of December. You can add a service agreement uh, if you would like to, and you can, of course, assign this to a particular agent. So if you wanted this to go out to a, a particular agent, you can add them here. And again, they will need to already be added as an agent onto your fixed flow site. You can instruct a contractor if you'd like to as well. Now, this will ensure that when the um, instruction date um, comes around, an IS number will be created and that will go directly off to the contractor that you've added here if you want to. You can also bulk update 
uh, the contractors on existing service events. So if, for example, one of your contractors to, was to retire and somebody else was to take over all your gas safety certificates, you could easily update that. And again, that will be shown on the Academy course, which I'd highly recommend that you go to. Requires review. Again, this will be explained on Academy, but you can switch this either to yes or no. If you have it on yes, that means that once the IS number has been completed and closed, the service event will not automatically update and show as complete. Instead, it will go to the service event status awaiting review, and you will then need to review the service event and manually mark that as complete. So there's an extra step if you have this to yes. You can turn it to no as well, which means that as soon as the um, IS number has been closed down by yourselves, the service event will automatically update and show as complete. It's important to remember that on the instruction date, when an IS number is created, it will stay very much attached to the service event throughout its whole journey. So the two are linked, but of course they are separate and an IS number is worked through just as you'd work through any other issue with those issue statuses that you can track on your dashboard. This is the new thing. So in Q2, what we released is we allowed you to now have requires landlord approval turned on. So I'm going to show you where the setting sits later. If the setting is set to yes, and you can also set the approval interval as well, then this will automatically show as yes. But of course, you can amend this on a per service event basis as well. And for example, switch it to no, just like I've been changing other things here. If this is switched to yes, this means that the service event will be sent on to the landlord before the instruction date and asks them for approval. They can either say, yes, they're happy for you to go ahead, or they can actually say that they would like to resolve the issues themselves. Um, I think this is really exciting. It's an extra fantastic step that we've added, and I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to leave this set to yes, and I'm quite happy with this approval interview interval for now and the approval date does show here. So this cannot be amended. It can only be amended by adjusting these numbers and of course the units here as well. So for example, if I was to change this to 100 days, you can see that that approval date has changed based on this. Instruction interval. Now the instruction interval will give you an instruction date, which again sits below and works the same way that the approval date worked just there. And on the instruction date, that is the date that the IS number will be created and it will go and do its thing, depending on what the landlord asked for and if you've got a contract to set up, etc. Instruction notes, they will pull through based on what you had on the event template. So again, if you want to change the instruction notes, it's worth making sure that your event templates are correct. And as I showed you before, you do have the ability to amend those. And as I said before, the beauty of plan maintenance is that you can set this to, re to recur. So as often as you like, obviously you want to make sure that you're keeping up to date with legislation. With legislation. So for example, we all know that gas safety certificates need to be carried out once a year. So we're happy with this. And again, that will pull through depending on what you've got on the template just here. So I'm happy for this to recur once a year. You can add an until date if you want to. And that means that the um, issue will recur until that date. If you do not add a date in here, then it will just continue to recur forever. Always double check you're happy with everything before you go ahead and decide to save this, because as I say, this will have a massive knock on effect to issues which are created with certain works due by dates, etc. So you need to make sure you're happy. And of course, you're now setting up automation. So you want to make sure you're happy with what's going up on and what will recur in the future. One thing I will mention as well is that on the 1st of October this year, there is a change in legislation with carbon monoxide and smoke alarms as well, where you need to make sure they are installed and that they're working prop properly Sorry, before a tenant moves in. So what you may want to do is set up your events for the 1st of October or maybe before then to make sure everything is done in time. And you could set that up actually as a non-recurring event because 
you just need to make sure they're installed and working properly. And when you've got new tenants who you know are moving in, again, you could set up another non-recurring planned maintenance event to make sure that it is moving and that it is working as they are moving in. So you can use plan maintenance to, of course, keep up with that legislation, which is changing. And again, that comes into place on the 1st of October 2022. Once you're happy, you can press save. And once you have pressed save, this will show here with the service event status showing as pending. If I click back into the property now, it will take me directly back into the works planner and you can see this has now come to life. So that example before has disappeared and we can now see the gas safety certificate here. You can see the frequency here. You can see that this is a statutory event and you can see that we're currently compliant because this event has been completed. If I hadn't added a last uh, completed date, this would not show here and everything, as I mentioned, would just be pending and in the future and you can see if I skip ahead years and years and years this is just recurring forevermore um, you can also see, like I said, that this is um, reflective of whether we're compliant or not at the moment. So again, you can imagine as you add more and more events to a property, it makes sense to view it here on the left hand side and see whether or not you're compliant or not. We can see now that the pending event is sitting here for this year, and we can see the issue will be created on the on no, November 10th uh, this year. So if I click into this pending event, of course, we are waiting on landlord approval. Now, this will go out to the landlord on the 23rd of um, August, but we don't want to wait for that. We can, in fact, scroll down and, of course, we can instruct this to the landlord or we can request approval now. So if I click here to request approval now and press confirm, the landlord will now be sent an email asking them for their approval for this work. So this is what I really want to bring your attention to, as this is what's new for uh, Q2 2022. The email itself looks something like this. So it will be branded with your logo and colour scheme and it will say something like this. So dear Michael, that's his name. For your property at, and it's got the property address here, the following service event is due. So it says the gas safety certificate, so it's really clear what's due and when the due date in fact is. And then it tells him what he needs to do. So I'm going to give you a second just to have a quick look at that email. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click here, respond to agent, because that is the next step that the landlord would take. Please remember that, of course, Fixflow is cloud based, so he will be able to go into his uh, phone to see this. And it will take him directly to the service event, which has an SE number just here. There's no IS number against this issue yet because the instruction date has not yet hit. And this is currently at the, issue, at the service event status, sorry, awaiting approval. Brilliant. All the details here. So they can view the detail here. They can see the instruction date, the due date, etc. And now they can either approve or decide to allocate to me. If they decide to allocate to me, then the service event status will update to instructions requested. And it is clear then it will go to the landlord. It will bypass the contractor on the instruction date if you've set a contractor up. And it will go directly to the landlord, asking them to ensure that everything is carried out by this due date. And it will then sit with them. And that's the IS number. Or they can decide to approve this. If they decide to approve this, then the service event status will go back to pending until the instruction date when the IS number will be created and will either go to the contractor, if you've got that set up already against the service event, or it will go through as a new IS number with the issue status awaiting instruction where you will need to manually instruct that off to a contractor of your choice. So they've got the two options here. If I click approve for now, you can see that it's saying approving this service event will notify the agent that you're happy for them to carry out the works. Brilliant. So I'm going to press accept and it, we can now see that they have approved this service event. And as I said, the status has now gone back to pending. If they've made a mistake, they can always reset this. But just to show you on the agent side now. If you can see that the service event status here is um, 
awaiting approval, so AA. But if I refresh this now, because the landlord has said that they're happy for you to do the works, it's gone back to pending. And pending again, remember, there would never be an IS number um, attached to a pending event, which would sit here and issue instructions. If they decide to actually reset this, and actually they want to do this themselves and click allocate to me and press accept, then as you can see here again, on the agent side, this will then go to IR, which stands for instructions requested, and it will go directly to the landlord on the instruction date for them to resolve. I hope all of that makes sense. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to talk to you a bit actually about Academy. So in order for you to understand how plan maintenance works a bit better, I would highly recommend that you go to our free planned maintenance course. By the end of play today, I am of course going to send you this recording as well as a short video on how you can sign up to Fix Flow Academy and also of course sign up to this fantastic course. It's about a two hour course, I think, and you can dip in and out at your own leisure and also track your learning um, on your Fix Flow site itself. If you haven't already, you will need to agree to the Fixed Flow Academy T's and C's. This is because we use a particular LMS system called a Talent LMS, so your data will be stored in there. But as I say, absolutely everything is, of course, completely free of charge. So I will send you a video on how you can do this, and I would recommend that anybody using plan maintenance does do this course before they continue and start using plan maintenance even more. Brilliant. OK, I hope all of that makes sense. I'm just going to show you now some settings. So settings can be um, viewed and amended by administrator users only. And if I click here on setup and go here to settings, uh, the planned maintenance settings sit here under issue settings and they sit here on planned maintenance. So here, this is where you can say whether or not you would like um, you know, landlords to have the approval set to yes. If you decide to actually set it to no, then it will be set to no when you manually add a service event. But of course, on a per service event basis, you can change that. And you've also got your approval interview interval, sorry, just here. And of course, you can amend the units. As always, any changes you make, you must press save settings just here. Something you can do is you can apply landlord approval settings to all service events. So say, for example, you've got pending service events and you haven't set up landlord approval. You can tick this box here. And what this will then do is it will ensure that the um, that landlord approval is turned on. If landlord approval, if the interval, say, is in the past, so say it's... Um, I don't know, the service event is due in 80 days, but you've got 90 days here. It will go straight out to your landlords, asking them to approve the service event. So this is something that you can do, and it will basically change the, um, it will change the request landlord approval from no to yes on all pending service events only, because of course at the pending status, they have not, there's no issue created. If for example, it's at the issue status, um, you know, instructed where the IS number is already created, of course, it won't go to the landlord at that point. So this is only for your pending events. So I hope this makes sense and you can click apply to all here if you want to. And then again, you would need to press save settings. Just to let you know as well, you can easily keep landlords better in the loop now when a service event um, instruction date comes around and the IS number is created. This is done under the notifications tab, which again can only be accessed by administrator users only. By clicking here on notifications and scrolling down, here we've got the landlord notification defaults. And it's just here when a new service event issue is created. So again, this is created on the instruction date itself. And you can set it up to send them an email to let them know this service event has now been um, has now been created. So it will keep them in the loop really, really well, which I think a lot of landlords like. So if you want to keep your landlords better in the loop, you can easily do so. 
Brilliant. Now I'm going to show you very briefly the compliance matrix. So this sits again under plan maintenance here on the left hand menu sidebar. And it's just at the top here where it says compliance matrix. Now, this is a brilliant way for you to see how compliant you are across your entire portfolio. So your um, properties will sit here. They are in a logical order in terms of it's all done um, numerically. So here we've got, for example, one, and it will be like one, then one, zero, one, 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 two, et cetera. So you can see these are all the ones that we've got like 100, 10, a 11, 12, 13, goes all the way down then to the twos. So that is how this is set in terms of the order. And you can see how compliant you are. And you've got all of your kind of service events that you're currently using and have set up here at the top. And you can see how compliant you are on a percentage in terms of for that particular property and also for a percentage for the particular um, event as well. So all of our checkout inspections are 100% compliant, which is brilliant. I haven't been the best property manager here. There is some work to do, but of course you want to see this completely green and it's something you may want to show, say your manager. Um, if, for example, you have like one on one, something like that, you've also got the filters up here at the top as well. So you could say, for example, I want to filter this out just for myself and press search. And then you'll be able to see how compliant you as a property manager are as well. So I think this is a really, really great way for you to see a full overview and ensure that you as a company are keeping compliant. You could also share, just to let you know, the works planners with your landlords as well. So this is relatively new too. If you'd want to do this, you can click here on setup and settings. And I believe it is in the planned maintenance section here that I showed you earlier. Allow landlords to view the works planners for their particular units. So they wouldn't be able to see anyone else's. This is either turned on or off. You cannot turn this on, unfortunately, on a per landlord basis. It's either turned on for all or it's turned off for all, um, but it will allow them then. So if it's set to yes like this, and we go in, as a landlord here, they can click here on my properties on their left hand menu sidebar. They could go, for example, to fix flow. And here they would then be able to view the works planner. So they can see, for example, how things are going. Again, they can view this in different ways as well. And they'll be able to see whether or not you're compliant. So if you did want to share that with your landlords, of course you can. Again, it can't be changed on a per landlord basis, but it's all set up. And again, administrator users can um, access this only to click on setup, settings, stay within the issue settings section and scroll all the way down to planned maintenance. Once again, any changes must be saved. Brilliant. Guys, that is all I'm going to go through with plan maintenance today, but I hope that has given you a bit of an introduction and hopefully created a bit of excitement around kind of um, the academy. Again, if you'd like to sign up, I will be sending you a short video on how you can do this um, after this uh, webinar so you will get that by the end of play today along with this morning's recording i hope that has been helpful there are some questions which i'm excited to have a look at and answer but before i do that i just want to give you a very quick introduction to multiple dashboards now multiple dashboards is an additional feature so it is something you would need to pay extra monthly for, but it is absolutely brilliant. And a lot of people that use plan maintenance a lot do in fact have this fantastic feature. So if you don't have plan, um, multiple dashboards set up, then you've just got the kind of one uh, dashboard here. The dashboard is absolutely brilliant. And I would urge anybody that doesn't fully understand it to click here on need help and have a look at our 17 minute dashboard video or alternatively come to our weekly webinar which is every Tuesday at 11 um, to kind of find out more about the, the dashboard and the workflows. But if you have got multiple dashboards set up, you probably guessed it, you can create more than one dashboard. So you will have this kind of drop down here allowing you to view different dashboards. You can have them unique to yourself or you can have kind of shared dashboards across the team. And it's a really good way to drive the right behaviours across the team and also, again, see a higher return on your investment. You can create a new dashboard panel just here and you can also copy dashboard panels or dashboards over so that you if there's one that you had as a template, you could easily copy that and make adjustments. 
You could, for example, click here and go into your planned maintenance jobs here. And this would allow you, for example, to track um, all of your, for example, service events awaiting review, service events overdue, and obviously making sure that these are staying uh, blank. And what you can do with multiple dashboards is you can actually create your very own dashboard panels. So you are no longer limited to the ones that we have for you. If you would like to create searches, you can do this with any of the lists that we have. So, for example, if you were to click on issues and issue search just here, we've got this kind of classic drop down filter here, which allows you to really narrow down your search. And you could, for example, say is planned maintenance? Yes. And you could have, um, I don't know, you might want to have um, closed or something like that and closed within the last um, I don't know, last week. So you can see all the plan maintenance issues that were closed in the last week and press search. And then any of the um, results that come up will show here. Okay, so here, for example, there are none. But once you're happy with a search, you could click here on add. And this would then allow you to add this as a panel, which you could then start adding to your dashboards. So you could really decide exactly what it is you would want to see on the dashboards and start building your dashboards out to make sure that you are driving the behaviors that you want to. And again, you can have, for example, shared dashboard panels and also to say, you know, this is only for your own dashboard if you want to as well. So this would, for example, be planned maintenance issues closed last week. So you can keep an eye on how many planned maintenance issues you're closing every single week. add some help text and you can say actually you want that to be shared and once you've added that for example here there's lots and lots and lots of other panels you can add you could say for example you know gas safety certificates due next month um you could have all of your so for example first of october you could have all of your uh, carbon monoxide alarms that need installing in the next month as well once you've added all of those so as soon as the data is there you can really bring this to life so for example you could click here on add panel and it was um here we go plan maintenance issues closed last week you could then click here and add selected and it would show here as a zero but of course every week that would perhaps change and it would allow you to track the metrics that you want to and add any dashboard panels that you would like i'm going to launch a quick poll to see if anybody would like to have a demonstration with somebody here at fixed flow to um yeah to, to, to go through multiple dashboards if it is something that you think would be interesting for you for your team please do let me know and of course we will set that up i'll get someone to reach out to you kind of as soon as possible so i'm just going to leave that poll launched there for a second and i'm now going to um go through the questions the first question is from barbara hi barbara thank you for joining me today is this webinar being recording recorded sorry i joined late and missed the first 10 minutes yes of course it is being recorded and i will send you all a recording by the end of play today uh, caroline hello once a plan maintenance event has been completed and it hasn't been done on exactly the date it was in the plan maintenance how do you get the new date to update automatically it seems to show the original date. OK, so if there are any changes in dates, this is actually where a waiting review would come really in handy. And again, all of this will be explained on Academy. If you have got a waiting review set to yes, as soon as the IS number is closed, the uh, service event will need to be reviewed in order for you to mark it as complete and show it as compliant and have it as green on the works planner and the compliance matrix. If there is a discrepancy of the dates, and for example, it was completed a bit late or a bit early, uh, when you go to mark the service event as complete, it will show that there's a discrepancy and it will ask you if you would like to update the due dates. That is a real benefit, in fact, of having requires review turned on. This is explained, like I say, in more detail in Academy. If you haven't done the course yet, please do. And it will kind of go through all of that with you. But yes, you can do it by having requires review turned on. Uh, Sam, hello, thank you for joining me today. When requesting landlords approval for service events, can we let them know how much the certificate will cost? They will need to see this before they can approve. 
Oh, Sam, that's a very good question. That is not something that can be added um, because there's no IS number. You cannot comment. C comments can only be sent within IS numbers. Uh, Sam, let me bring that to the attention of the product team. Um, that would be an insight, but it's a really good um, kind of question and insight. So let me bring that towards product and we'll see what they say. Um, any kind of insights, feature requests, et cetera, we always do our best and send them on to the product team for you. And sometimes they do actually come to life on fixed way. So I'll bring that to the team for you, Sam. Unfortunately, that's not something that we currently have available. Can we have different landlord approval emails for different types of service events? Can we say dif different things? Um, currently at the moment, I believe the answer to that is no. Just going to double check, but I'm pretty sure not. So what I've done is I've clicked here on setup and content edit. This is where you can make amendments to the emails that go out through Fixflow, but you cannot amend all in every email. If I scroll down here, there doesn't seem to be a way to change that. Again, I'll bring this up with products, but Sam, unfortunately, at the moment, it's not. I think a question I'll have around that is what is the need for that? Like, what are you trying to solve? So maybe I'll reach out to you separately, Sam, so I can um, like take that, take this off this webinar. I'll, I'll send you an email. It'd be great to get some more kind of feedback on that if that's OK. Uh, Susan, hello, thank you again for joining me today. What happens if a property is withdrawn? Will the plan maintenance automatically cancel? So it's really important that you actually keep your fixed flow data up to date. What you will do is if a property is, is something you no longer manage, you will need to click on the property here, or when I say you will need to, we urge you, we really recommend that you keep your data as clean as possible. So you can click on here, you can go to the actions button here and deactivate the property. When you deactivate the property, this will mean that everything will basically be removed. So all issues and I believe service events as well. So yeah, any related service events will be halted and no longer run. If you deactivate the property, this will happen. It does tell you this. It will also, for example, lock out any related occupiers as well. All issues will be marked as closed and service events will stop. So yes, if you've just stopped managing a property, but there are still open issues that you need to resolve, my recommendation would be to get those resolved first um, before you deactivate the property or those will automatically close for you when you press the deactivate button just here. So the answer is yes on that. If they're still open and there's something you want to resolve, don't deactivate until you know everything has been resolved and you're happy. I hope that's helpful. Uh, one more question has come in. Hello, Ollie. Is there a way to add the same plan maintenance event to multiple properties at the same time as opposed to multiple um, events on one property? For example, carbon monoxide alarms installation across many properties. Yes, that needs to be done by the 1st of October uh, 2022. So that is very, very relevant. Um, I would say do an import. So imports are shown on Academy. There's a whole video on them. Um, so have a look at that because what you can do is you can you could then <clears throat> bulk import them all. Like I say, if you've got 20 or more or even 15 or more, do a bulk import. It will really save you time. Have a lot of attention to detail and do follow the videos which are available on Fixflow Academy. It goes through the template in some really good detail. Just to let you know, the course on Academy is linear, so you have to watch the videos in the order they're given, but you can skip through any. So if something doesn't seem that relevant to you, you can, of course, skip to the end. There's also quizzes. There's a you'll receive a certificate on completion. There's interaction slides as well on there. So I really hope you do enjoy the course for those of you signing up. But Ollie, yes, I would recommend a bulk import for that because there's no way to do kind of bulk action add through the actual system. It is one by one, as I showed you. Um, brilliant. Oh, questions are coming in left, right and centre. I'm glad to see this. Hi, Grace. Good morning. Is there an easy way to clear all plan maintenance on file to start again? The Previously, the properties didn't load correctly. I'm sorry to hear that, Grace. Yes, if you um, get in touch, so if you have a customer success manager here at Fixflow, ask them because they can actually delete it really, really easily for you. Um, 
If you don't have a CSM, then you can get in touch with us. Literally, this little need help budget here on the bottom left hand corner is a brilliant way to access our articles, videos, and of course, get in touch as well. If you don't have a CSM, literally click on contact us and ask that we can wipe all of that for you. Just to let you know as well, you can easily archive a particular service event if it's no longer needed. And of course, by deactivating a property as I showed you before, that will then close down and halt all service events for that particular one. But Grace, if that's the case, get in touch with your CSM or literally click on need help here, reach out and someone in the support team will get back to you. Uh, an anonymous question has come through here. So hi, Jessica, not directly linked to your webinar today, but can I, as a non-fixed flow user, but whose company is a user, get access to Academy to review content for my users? You will need to be added as an agent. We can add you though. So get in touch with us again, like I showed Grace. If you are struggling with anything, contact us here. Ask the question here first though, is the quickest way to get an answer. But if you're not sure, click on contact us here. You will need to be set up as an agent because that's how you would log in. So logging into Academy is done through this little dude here and clicking on Fixed Flow Academy, where you'll be taken to your Academy tab and you can basically um, see your courses, you can track your courses, etc. cetera. Um, but yes, you will need to be added as an agent because it will take you to your agent profile and allow you to do that. I would recommend though, there are other courses available on there as well. There's an introduction course, which is brilliant for new users as well. That is non-linear. So you can literally click on which videos and cherry pick your learning. Um, it is a bit longer, but it's brilliant for anyone new. Get in touch with us if you need to be signed up or ask one of your agents to sign you up and then you can easily sign up to Academy me yourself it is self sign up guys and again i will send you that video on how to sign up by the end of play today is it possible to delete service events yes of course matthew 100 so to do so you would click here on uh, plan maintenance go to properties for example if i wanted to remove that service event i added earlier for fixed flow house I would literally click into the event name here and there's an archive button just here. OK, so when you archive, you either leave the issues open or you can close them. If you don't need the issues, close them. It will just be a much, much neater. And you can just say, like, no works required or there's lots of other options here and press confirm. And once I do that, if I then go back into the property like this, you will see that that has now disappeared like that. So any mistakes or anything like that, you can do it. If like Grace, you want to remove everything and start again, get in touch with your CSM or reach out to us on the support helpline here. I hope that was helpful, Matthew. And again, thanks for joining me today. Another anonymous uh, question, once deactivated, if we then take over management again, can we reactivate a property? Of course you can, yes. So to do so, you can click here on properties, and you can actually, so like I said, with our classic drop down filter, you can click here on this, scroll down, and here it says, is property active? If you say archived only and press search, all of your archived properties will appear, so there's only two here. You can actually bulk actions to bulk uh, reactivate them by clicking there, or alternatively, you can click into one, and activate it here. So you can, of course, reactivate that. And um, that's no problem at all. Brilliant. Thank you so much for everyone who's filled out the poll. I'm going to end that now. Um, thank you. And I will reach out to everybody who answered yes. Guys, I want to say big, big thank you to everyone who joined me this morning. It's been a real pleasure going through the main Q2 release highlight um, from yeah, from last quarter, which was, as I said, um, being able to send any plan maintenance off for landlord approval. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you're excited about Academy to learn this even more, this brilliant feature. Um, I will be sending this to you all by the end of play today, um, along with a video on how to sign up to the plan maintenance um, free course on Fixed Flow Academy. Enjoy learning that way. I hope you find it helpful. There is a feedback form at the end as well. So I look forward to hearing that from you guys as well. And finally, I would really appreciate if you could just take a couple of minutes, not even that, maybe even just one minute to provide some feedback, which is literally going to, um, as, as I close this webinar, there'll be a little feedback kind of page pop up 
Um, I would love to hear how you got on today. Please be honest. Um, critical feedback as well is brilliant because it allows us to improve even more. But I do hope you found this helpful. And thanks again for joining me. My name's Jessica. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your week and have a lovely weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.